on this installment of Cumberland Rover. A sailor gets lost in the woods, and a minnow gets confused by a rock. It's sort of a Lewis and Clark situation. I think it's pretty evident that I tend to favor the traditional when it comes to the boats that I build and sail, including the materials used to build them. I tend to favor solid wood plank over plywood and screws and nails over epoxy. But yet, many people would probably consider my style of sailing to be unconventional at times. This outing in the 12 foot baby skiff is a good illustration of that. There's barely a whisper of wind, but I'm actually about to begin a pretty challenging creek run. And no, the challenge is not to see how slow I can sail. With the lake at Summer Pool, this narrow creek is actually deep enough to sail up for a pretty good distance. I want to see how far I can sail into the woods before grounding out or getting the spars and rigging hung up in limbs. Rather than speed, distance, or nerve, this is a test of precision at the helm and finesse on the main sheet. There's obviously not a lot of wind back here, but it's enough to move the skiff along. I'm sitting very still in order to better perceive the slightest breath of wind cutting through the foliage that I might be able to use to my advantage. You may think this overhanging tree is the end of the line. Not even close. The fun is just starting.
The difference in water color indicates a difference in depth, and I steer to keep the skiff in the deep part, especially the rudder. There's still good water to float the skiff, but not enough water for the rudder, and I'm out of overhead room for the sail. It's time to convert the boat to creek mode and belly on. Places like this make it easy to understand why early pioneers refer to Kentucky as a paradise. These wild streams have a way of drawing you in and making you want to stay. You won't want to leave. Well, at least not until mosquito season kicks in. Then you'll be begging to get out any way you can. It's been a good long while, but this is one of the places that I just keep coming back to year after year. And just up ahead is a footbridge that local hikers will no doubt recognize. I just saw a bobcat about 40 meters ahead of me. I wish I had a chance to get it on film, but it just happened way too fast. I only saw it for about three seconds at the most, but it was just up here at the bridge either getting a drink or maybe it was after some fish. There's a couple of deep spots up here and I just saw a fish jump. That's always a really special experience when you see a wild cat out in the wild. I've only seen them a handful of times and basically every time I saw one they were crossing a road and I was in a vehicle. That's pretty rare to actually see one just out here in the middle of the woods. Very cool. There are several footbridges just like this along the trail, and you know exactly what I'm going to say. They all smell amazing. 
they have this fresh piney scent and I couldn't swear to it but I think that's because they're finished with pine tar. This channel will continue to charge along under full sail, but at CumberlandRover.com I offer videos not available on this channel or anywhere else. The videos and articles are free, I don't run ads, but I do have a store offering some unique handmade products of my own design that I think will be of interest to sailors and outdoor enthusiasts.